Welcome to Community America Ballpark. We're in the dugout. It's kind of spitting out here today. Uh, here in Kansas City, Kansas, home of the Kansas City T-Bones. And the only reason I say that, I normally don't on these videos, but uh, this is kind of a cool thing today, and you might be watching this who knows where. I'm Matt Folks, Director of Media Relations here, along with starting pitcher Josh Rainwater. And Josh has been, um, here in the last week or so, we've, we've been seeing these, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but these baseball bracelets, necklaces emerging from the T-Bones dugout, and it's because of this guy. So Josh, for, and so this could be a little how-to video of, of doing this. And uh, so if you would, Josh, and thanks for doing this, for this, by the way. Oh, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so so how, how do we start doing this? Well, most likely you want to get a good baseball, a new one, so the seams are clean and white. And then you just, I like to use a razor blade, but this is what I've been using here lately. And you want to take it, and when you start cutting, you got to be very careful because, you know, razor blades are sharp. But you'll look on the seam, you'll see the holes. You want to try and get as close as you can to those holes, which I've already pre-done this one. You get as close as you can to the holes and outline your seams. And then you get one done, and you'll, you'll pull it apart. And sometimes you have to go back, like right here, it'll catch here in a second. I've already done it a couple times, mm -hmm. but it'll catch. And then you got to take your razor blade and nick it a little more, and then you just peel it all the way back. Like right there, it catches. So just to make sure I got a clean seam, I'll just come and still being careful. And just peel it all the way back off. <clears throat> and by the way, if if Josh cuts his hand while doing this video, I I don't I will destroy the evidence. <laughs> all right, and then you peel back the well. There's two. There, there's different ways to do it. Some people will take the razor blade and go ahead and outline this one again. Uh -huh. But I like it to kind of be clean, so I'm gonna peel it back, and then I'm gonna do it with a with some scissors. So see, when you pull it back like that, you're, that's going to be your main spot of where your laces are, and you got to pull those out of the ball. <clears throat> so then you pull your seams right here, and you got to figure out which one goes where. So see, these two, you'll have two and two. And you'll see the split. So then I'll take the scissors, and you got to figure out so you don't cut, so you don't cut them and waste any if you want to make a necklace. If you're making a bracelet, you can just cut it around that area and go because your wrist ain't going to be that big. But if you're going to make a necklace, you want to savor as much as you can. So you figure that out and then you look on this side and you figure out where the seam is on that side. And you okay, hold on. Before you cut that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this up close. So you can see the uh, there's that space between the seams. Okay. Then you find that, you find that space and then you kind of flip it over and you kind of eyeball on what seam it's going to be on in there and you cut. And you just cut a little notch or whatever, just enough to get your scissors in there. And then I fold it back, and I get my seams out of the way, pull them back this way. And then I just start going, like I did with the razor blade, but now I'm using my scissors, close to the holes, but not cutting the holes. Like I was telling him a while ago, if you hit the hole, what it's going to do is open your seam up. Like right here, I hit that hole, see it opens the seam. Oh, yeah. it'll, be, it'll do the same thing down here, but if you want yours to look like his, where it's what I call twisted, because yeah. some people like them flat, and you have to straighten out and flatten it. But if you like it twisted, when you twist it and you nick a hole, it, it messes your laces up. But then you just go ahead and cut along the line. Try not to hit the holes. This will probably take a little while. So even though these have been, uh, we've just been seeing these here recently, how long have you been doing this? Um. I feel like I've been doing it for a while. I want to say I did it like high school. If not, if not in high school, it was like right out of high school. So 03, 04 range, somewhere in there. And so, you know, kids, get your parents' permission to, before doing this. I probably should say that. Get your dad to do this <laughs> if you're too young. You do not want to cut yourself. It will hurt. Then at the very end, when you get ready to finish cutting, make sure your seams are out of the way again, and then cut it off. See? Now you're almost done. It doesn't, now, doesn't take long at all. Well, I was going to say that I, I paused the video. You probably saw the jump there. Uh, I paused the video, but 
I think it took him all about 30 seconds to cut that. Yeah, and it only took me probably about 30 seconds to outline, which when you do it for a while, I've been doing it, God, I made, I don't know, what, six, six or seven in two days. So um, I'm kind of getting good with that little razor blade. <laughs> but then to straighten it out, you just kind of pull on. Don't pull too hard because you don't want to tear it or rip it or anything. So just pull and straighten it out. And it'll come out like that. And then it's it's got a little gluey, gluey feel to it. If you want it to be like his and twine, then all you do is you twist. But the key is the twist and kind of pull and twist so it sticks together. Ah. And it takes it takes a little while to get it to hold, which I had help from our, our trainer, Josh. I would hold one end, he holds the other. And once I get it all twisted and twined, we'll twist it hard together and then pull it so it, so it really sticks. But after you make them, and if you see it starting to untwist a little bit, just pull it off and twist it some more. Some people, some people say wet them and then twist them. But I just, I've always just twisted and pulled. I guess I do it the harder way. <laughs> I don't know if the water will work, so I don't want to mess it up, but yeah. pretty sure it won't hurt it. I think baseball's been wet once or twice, probably. Oh, yeah. So are you the type of kid that, uh, I mean, to me, when the cover comes off the ball, I'm wanting to take all the all the string and twine off and see what's on the inside, and I'm not doing this with it. Yeah, I, uh, I actually did that, too, the other day. <laughs> I don't know if you ever done that, but... It starts out, it looks like this, but once you get that done, there's like yarn underneath, like two different types of yarn, and then a little red bouncy ball. Yeah. Well, if you cut in that red bouncy ball, it's a little like cork. Really? Just a little little round cork. I have both of the pieces in my locker. <laughs> I got bored in the game. We had two balls that we used, so I took them apart. I cheated, though. I didn't unro un unroll them all. I cut them. <laughs> See, you always wonder what uh, starting pitchers do, and when during their days off and now you see yeah we get bored in the dugout we goof off a lot so we're nearing the end of the season as we record this today is actually the last home game for the t-bones here in 2012 but uh, josh is originally from louisiana and so what what will you be doing during the during the off season well i'll be uh going back to work at casey electric uh family-owned electrical business back home and uh, I'll be working with basically family to me. I've been working with them for about seven years off and on. They always always give me a job when I come home. So that's cool. So how many how many of these can you make out of one baseball? One baseball will make probably for a kid like a necklace. You can do keychains. Like I think some of the guys after I made them a bracelet, they've had probably about that much left, and they'll probably just like. Some of them did like a little little twirl with it, and they're gonna put it on their keychain or whatever just for decoration. Some have little kids; they're gonna tie it to theirs. But for an average person, you're probably gonna make one. Like, if I did it for myself, I'd probably have it there. So I'd cut cut it about there. I have that about that much left, and once you untwine a little bit of that, you'll have about that much. So. It's not really much to do with, so you can probably make one, like I made one for our manager's son and you, okay. I made two and one, so it depends on the person, and how big the wrist and the kid. Well, okay, so I've got, um, and I haven't told Josh this yet, but I do have a couple requests from the household. The folks house saw these and thought they're just the coolest, and so with, uh, you know, and you got, you have any brothers, sisters? Yep, I got, uh, got two brothers. got an older half-brother and a younger brother. And, and so I'm sure you know that uh, if, if one kid gets one thing, oh, you got to all of them want it. So uh, there might be a couple involved here. <laughs> and so, but luckily we have, uh, we have a couple baseballs here. See how I just, I'm just twirling it, by the way. The whole time I've been sitting here, I just twirl it. And then once it gets tight, I try and pull it. And that just kind of helps the glue kind of get tighter along the ball and hold it hold it more. That's it. And that's all there is to it. So, before we, uh, where the scissors go? Train room scissors. Before, <laughs> before it gets completely done here. Um, so, let's go on and, and show us, you know, go on and cut it and, and make, uh, maybe just make a couple of equal, uh, as equal as you can. Act like you're making it for a kid. Like how so if I didn't want that be. Yeah, probably good. 
Okay, so now we're going to cut it. Actually, we're not. He is. See, you cut it. You're going to have nothing sticking out, so you're going to have to peel it back. Just like that. And you have to wiggle it a little bit to kind of get it to let go. And you'll split it and just pull the seams out. And then of course you don't want to do too too much, so just do as much as you as you want to pull out to tie it with. Oops. Nice hands. <laughs> That's why you're a pitcher. Hey, we have good hands. <laughs> so see then when you get there, you wanna fold your seams down, bring your scissors back, and then cut kind of close to the hole. So you don't open that, open that back up, and cut that off. Okay. Then pull your seams back, twist it again, and then what you're gonna do is when you put it on somebody's wrist, you put it on. If they want to tie it on, and then when you pull it tight, you see how the seams they come together, and then you'll do a, do a double knot, ah. so you can find out if that's if that's big enough. And if it's not, then you just untwirl it, do it a little more. But like I tied yours on, some people like uh, in the clubhouse, they're, they're going and getting like clasps and stuff like you do for necklaces and bracelets, and they're going to tie those on so they can hook them on and off. So you can do very cool. You can do, use different things to keep them on and off of you. Okay. Well, very cool. That's, uh, that's your uh, craft for the day. For this winter, during the off season, you can uh, be making these, and you can give them out as presents. You know, I'm, I'm sure that... Uh, we could put in some orders. We could start a little business on the side with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. He is Josh Rainwater. He makes these cool necklaces or bracelets or whatever you want. Keychains, backpack pull. You know, kids have backpack pull things on their backpacks now. You can use it for that, too. So he is Josh. We are with the Kansas City T-Bones. Thanks for watching, everyone.